Okay, in this video, we're going to look at some simple MOSFET circuits. Now, these circuits will be simple, easy to build, they'll have a low parts count, and you could build some of these circuits to get familiar with some of the characteristics of a MOSFET. Now, this is the MOSFET I'm using here. It's in the TO220 package. It's an IRF1405, and it's not a logic level MOSFET because they're a lot easier to obtain. And I have a 1K ohm resistor, and I have an LED. Now I have two touch sensors. I have two jumpers up top. You can see here that's my on uh, touch sensor. And on the bottom I have an off touch sensor. So if I bridge my fingers across those sensors, I can turn on the LED. And if I touch the bottom one, it turns it off. So what I'm doing basically on the top one, I'm bridging VCC over to the gate of the MOSFET transistor. And I'm charging up the gate to source capacitor that's internal to the MOSFET. And it turns on the, the MOSFET. Now when I touch the bottom touch pads, I'm actually draining the capacitor, the gate the source capacitor, and I'm shunting it to ground. So it's very sensitive. All I have to do is just charge up the capacitor, and I can turn on or off the LED. Now if I just gently touch the, the, the pads, you can see sometimes I could actually get a half charge, like you see there. So that would be like the threshold of the MOSFET, and it's not totally uh, not totally on. So you can see I'm actually discharging and charging the capacitors. It has a feel. You can actually feel the capacitance of that MOSFET. And that's a dominant feature of a MOSFET is the gate to source capacitance, which you have to take into consideration when you're designing a MOSFET circuit. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built in my breadboard. Now you can see the three main components. There's my MOSFET transistor, my LED, and my 1K ohm resistor, and I'm powering the circuit with 10 volts. Now the MOSFET transistor that I'm using is an IRF1405. It's an N-channel enhancement MOSFET. Now it's not a logic level MOSFET, but you could use a logic level MOSFET in, in this circuit and it would also work, like an IRLZ44N. Now whenever you see a MOSFET symbol in a drawing, always envision a capacitor between the gate and the source because there is an internal capacitance, it's called CISS in every MOSFET and on the IRF1405 that capacitance is 5000 picofarads or 5 nanofarads. Now this is my, my on touch pad and this is my off touch pad. Now when I bridge my on touch pad I'm feeding a voltage into the capacitor and I'm charging up the capacitor, the CISS capacitor to 10 volts it will turn on the, uh, the MOSFET and the LED will come on. Now when I release my finger, that 10 volts is trapped on the capacitor. There's no way to bleed it off because of the high impedance of the MOSFET. So it, it will, the, the LED will stay on until I touch the off touch pad. Then I'll drain the voltage off the capacitor and it will turn off the MOSFET and the LED will turn off. Now when I turn on the LED with the on touch pad and I slightly touch the off touch pad and drain the voltage off a little bit, then my, my intensity of my LED is about half. So now the MOSFET is acting like a variable resistor and it's in its ohmic region. Okay, here are two circuit variations that you could experiment with. Now these are very simple timers. If you look at the circuit on the left, you can see I've added a capacitor from the gate to source on the MOSFET transistor. And the value of that capacitor could be from 1 to 10 microfarads. I've also put a resistor in parallel with the capacitor. Now when you press and release the push button switch, the capacitor will charge up to 10 volts, which will turn on the MOSFET, which will turn on the LED. Now the resistor will start to bleed off the voltage on the capacitor, and when a capacitor voltage drops below the threshold voltage of the MOSFET, the LED will turn off. So this RC value determines the, the, your uh, timer interval, so you can experiment with those two values. Now the circuit on the right is a very long timer, so instead of a resistor bleeding off the capacitor, we have a diode, a 1N4 and 4A, reverse biased, so the reverse leakage current of this diode will slowly leak off uh, this charge on the capacitor until it drops below the threshold voltage, which will turn off the LED. In this case, we could actually get a time interval of days with this setup. Okay, here's my next simple MOSFET circuit. As you can see, I'm varying the intensity of an LED. And normally we see this being done with a microcontroller using pulse width modulation, but I'm using a MOSFET. That's a MOSFET transistor here. So it's, it's, I'm using it in its ohmic region. So it's acting like a variable resistor. 
So when the LED is at its full brightness, then the transistor is totally saturated, and when the LED is totally off, the transistor is in cutoff, and in between, with the, with the varying brightness, it's in its ohmic region. Now I'm driving a capacitor with a very low frequency oscillator using a 4093 RC oscillator, which is charging and discharging a capacitor slowly, and that voltage is fed into the gate of the MOSFET, which, which was varying the intensity of the LED. So if we go on the oscillator, you can see the oscillator high and low, and that's being fed into a capacitor, which is charging and discharging it, and that voltage, that swinging voltage, is applied to the gate of the MOSFET, which would turn it into this ohmic region and vary the brightness of the LED. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. If you look at the very left, you can see a low frequency RC oscillator using a 4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate. And that's my R and C values that I'm using for this low frequency oscillator. And it's being buffered by this inverter. So now when the output of pin 4 goes high, it will charge up this capacitor, the 3.3 microfarad capacitor. And when pin 4 goes low, it will discharge the capacitor. So we'll get a varying voltage from 0 to 10 volts, and then from 10 volts to 0, fed into the gate of the MOSFET transistor, and it will be in its ohmic region. So it'll be like a voltage divider. So this will be one resistance, and this will be the other uh, resistor. So it will change resistance and, and vary the intensity of the LED. So this is like a source follower, so the output voltage fed into the gate will be transposed across the 820 ohm resistor and LED, and that voltage will vary and change the intensity of the LED. Okay, here's my last simple MOSFET circuit. And it's a little alternating flashing circuit. And it flashes incandescent bulbs. There's only six components to this flasher. So there's no moving parts, there's no relays. It's just two MOSFETs, two capacitors, and two resistors. Now the capacitor and resistor on each MOSFET determines the flashing rate. So by changing, say, the capacitor to a larger value, it will slow down the flashing rate, and if we go to a higher value of capacitance, we could actually increase the flashing rate. So what I could do, I could actually put some different capacitors into the circuit. So right now we have 0.1 microfarad capacitors, these capacitors here in the circuit, and I could replace them with 0.047 microfarad capacitors, and we could look at the flashing rate after we replace the capacitors for smaller uh, values. Okay, I've replaced the 0.1 microfarad capacitors with 0.047 microfarad capacitors. And that increased the flashing rate. So it's very simple to modify the circuit to increase the flashing rate or decrease the flashing rate. So with six components, two, two uh, MOSFET transistors, two capacitors, two resistors, we could build ourselves a little alternating flashing circuit. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of my six component flashing circuit, which flashes two incandescent bulbs. Now when we first power up the circuit, we have current flowing from the 12 volt power supply through both bulbs, through the two 10 mega ohm resistors, and they're going to try to charge up the gate capacitors on each MOSFET. Now one of them is going to beat the other one, so let's say this one comes on first, so the drain will go to ground, and so now this, this uh, bulb here will come on, so we'll have 12 volts through the bulb, through the transistor to ground. Now this point here will be grounded, so this capacitor will be grounded, so now we could charge up through the filament of this bulb, through the 10 mega ohm resistor, and it will charge up this capacitor. Now when the voltage on this capacitor reaches the threshold voltage of this transistor, this will turn on. So the drain will go to ground, turn on this bulb, and this will send a, a pulse through the capacitor which will turn off this, this transistor which, which will turn off this bulb. And now it, the sequence starts over again, so now we're going to have a charging through this bulb, through this resistor and this capacitor to ground. And when this threshold voltage at the gate uh, triggers this uh, transistor, this bulb will come on, which will shut off this bulb. So that will they'll get your alternate flashing circuit, it will repeat back and forth, and it will alternately flash this circuit. So just by changing the two capacitors, we could actually change the flashing rate of this, of this circuit. So there's my circuits, my simple MOSFET circuits. So it's a good way to learn how these MOSFETs work. So you just build up these circuits, play around with different components, uh, wire them up in different ways. And that's the best way to learn about MOSFET transistors.